Okay, we're going to talk about uh, and review some special factoring techniques that you need for pre-cal. You need to know how to factor or you're going to struggle throughout the whole year. So, I'm basically going over some of the easier ones if you have these basics down. Some of the more difficult ones that we'll run into when we get into trigonometry um, won't be as hard. So make sure you have your factoring down and that you can do factoring quickly. Now we're going to do special factoring. The difference of the sums. Doc X calls this dots. And we're also going to review perfect square trinomials. Okay. So this kind here where we have uh, the degree, the highest degree or the degree of this expression is 4. That means it's the highest exponential power here. You're used to seeing it like this. And then what you do, you, you draw your little parentheses. These are both pluses, so it's plus plus. Um, we have xx here. And you just ask yourself, what two numbers multiplied give you 36? But when you combine them or add them together, you get 13. So we know that's 9 and 4. And it doesn't really matter where you put the 9 and 4, because these are both plus pluses. Now, let me erase this a little bit. 9 and 4. I know y'all get it. In this case, we have the 4 here. So instead of getting all complicated on you, Let's just do it this way. Instead of x here, we're going to put x squared plus 4. Then x squared plus 9. Now, when you FOIL this out, you will get x squared plus, uh, no, you'll get x to the 4th. plus 4x squared, or plus 9x squared, plus 4x squared, plus 36, which when you combine these two, leads you back to here. So we don't, we really aren't foiling, you already learned that in Algebra 1. But basically, when you see something like this, um, in a way, just use some common sense on this. But I did have a lot of questions about this last year. So let's do another one quickly. We're going to go ahead and do our parentheses here. We know it's x squared, x squared. What two numbers, when you multiply, give you a 15. But when you combine them, um, it gives you an 8. We know that's 3 and 5. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 plus 3 is 8. You can FOIL it out and check, but this is pretty easy. The main thing we wanted to go over was that. Pretty easy. Alright. Now, let's try one that looks a little scarier. Um, well, we know we're going to do draw little parentheses. Okay. Um, we know it's x squared, x squared. Fortunately, I put pluses in everything, so a little harder when they're opposite, right? We also have a y squared here, so we know we're going to have a y here and a y here. We know we're going to have plus plus. What two numbers multiplied together give you 16, and when you combine them, give you an 8. And obviously, it is 4. Now, in this case, these both of these quantities are the same. So, I can write it as x squared plus 4y squared. This leads us into the next segment of perfect square trinomials. Now, I know this is a little messy, but
But if you need to read this, I don't I don't think most of y'all will, but when if you need to read this, um later on you have it. A perfect square trinomial is when the first term is a perfect square. That means like one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is sixteen, and so forth. Number two, the last term is a perfect square. And the middle term is two times two times that of your a times b. So for example, my first term x squared is this would be these two would be considered perfect square trinomials. Okay, so let's go and uh, do these. These are on the next page. All right. So from the previous page, I rewrote this, and we have x squared minus 14x plus 49. Now, we notice that this term is a perfect square. The first term. The last term is a perfect square, 7 squared. And then when you multiply 2 times x times 7, we get 14x. So we can write this as x minus 7 squared. You always pick the first operator here to put here. So you always pick the first to put there. Now let's try another one. Let's try this one. We're going to do our little parentheses. Clearly, 9 is a perfect square because the square root of 9 is 3. Uh, clearly, x squared is a perfect square because the square root of x squared is x. Again, I these are both pluses. Now, the square root of 25 is 5. That's a perfect square. So, our last term, it satisfies this condition. Is So, we're going to write 5, 5. Now, the, the always the issue is this middle term. So, all you have to do is say is 3 times x times 5 times 2. So it's twice. This equals 30x, which is what we have here. So this is a perfect square trinomial. You should remember this from Algebra 2. And what do we have here? Okay, this is what Doc X calls dots, difference of the sums. And these are perfect squares as well. So this formula, you'll see this over and over again. I can't tell you how many times you will see this. Always your formula, it's going to be negative here. All right, and then you, you can either write it this way or you can put the plus first too. Your preference it doesn't matter because you're multiplying. So, if I write this first problem to follow this form, I'm going to write this as 3x squared minus 2y squared. Because if you square this out, you get 9x squared. And if you square this one out, you get uh, 4y squared. So technically, this is my a, so a is 3x, my b is 2y, and I just fill in the formula. So we have 3x minus 2y times 3x plus 2y. Another one here, and of course, in your pre-cal, you don't have to... Um, show all your work on something like this but I'm going to go ahead and show it here my a is 5x and my b is 1 so basically this is 5x minus 1 times 5x plus 1 and those this is a review of your factoring